Hey, a silver lining this season has been the emergence of young talent that has surfaced for the athletics at the major league level. All around the Diamond A's fans have seen new faces and a peek into the future for the green and gold. But today in the final home game of the season, it's only fitting that prize prospect Jarrell Cotton takes the hill. Cotton has been outstanding in his three major league starts so far as the young man looks to be a big part of this A's team going forward. Cotton and the A's close out the home season versus the Rangers next. It is the final home game of this 2016 season. It is also today's game brought to you by Hyundai and it's Colby Lewis the veteran right hander for the Texas Rangers and he will be opposed by Jarrell Cotton. So final game of the series final home game of the year. It's the Rangers and the A's coming up on CSN California. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's baseball along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Copp. You saw Jarrell Cotton. He'll be making his fourth big league start. He's been good in his first three, Ray. Just one earned run allowed in each of those three starts. And uh, there's something about this young man. He seems to have, uh, he's kind of got that moxie on the mound and he knows how to pitch. It's audition time once again for Jarrell Cotton, but he has been outstanding. Won his first major league start, his major league debut, but he's pitched extremely well since then. The A's are monitoring him as far as a pitch count, his innings pitch. They want to make sure that he's not overworked himself especially in the month of September but he has been outstanding I think he's going to continue when you have a fastball to change of combination that he has that's going to make you great uh, if you were going to name an MVP for the A's this year I think it would have to be Chris Davis of course the 44 home runs rain what you have to remember this is just his third full season in the big league so he still has a chance to get a lot better but man what a season you know I think they said it best he can hit the ball out of any park any place they talked about Milwaukee but we've seen here at the Coliseum he had two monster shots in Texas last week in, number 39 and number 40 and after missing three games one being the off day he got the double yesterday cop I think he's back I think he got his timing back yesterday with this double we'll see how it plays out for the remainder of the season eight games ago he needs one more RBI to reach 100 he's going to do that but what a season he has had and probably the fourth place hitter for the athletics in the future all right and the way he's going he'll probably do it with a home run Absolutely. so why yeah. not so the A's will try to salvage the final game of this series and they'll try to finish the home schedule on a winning no. So it's a beautiful day at the ballpark and we're looking forward to it. It's the A's and the Rangers. We'll have lineups and first pitch right after this.
on CSN California is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Taste the all-new Jack's Brewhouse Bacon Burger today at Jack in the Box. Limited time only at participating restaurants. By Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. And by America's Tire, your low-price journey starts here. So, Jarrell Cotton will lead the athletics out onto the field, trying to wrap up this home schedule with a victory. So, the young right hander making just his fourth big league start. Game time weather presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is open this weekend. It's very hot today at the Coliseum, 85 degrees. And I don't know this for a fact, but I'm kind of guessing. I mean, that's got to be the hottest we've had temperature first pitch this year here at this ballpark. Somebody has that stat someplace. I guarantee it someplace. <laughs> so a warm one today at the Coliseum on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Here's the lineup for the visiting Texas Rangers. Regulars back in there. Carlos Gomez, Ian Desmond, Carlos Beltran, Adrian Feltre, Roque Odour, Jonathan Luke Cray, Mitch Moreland, Jared Hoying, Hanser Alberto. And Jarrell Cotton on the mound. Of course, uh, they are monitoring him. And I will see how he goes today facing the Rangers for the first time. And Kaip, like you said, this is the everyday lineup in for the Rangers facing Jarrell Cotton today. He has faced the Angels, the Royals, and the Astros. And now for the first time, these Texas Rangers. So Cotton kicks, and the first pitch of the ball game is popped up. Alonzo. Foul territory waits and he's got it and we are underway from the Coliseum. First pitch, 107. So that'll bring up center fielder Ian Desmond. Defensively for the A's this afternoon, Davis in left, Ibner in center, Olsen in right, Healy, Simeon, Wendell, Alonzo around the infield and Bruce Maxwell is the catcher. First major league start, Cole Calhoun swung at the first pitch, hit it in to the seats. Foul ball. And today, Carlos Gomez, not surprisingly, swinging at the first pitch. So with a one out here is Desmond. Desmond hitting 287 with 22 home runs and 84 runs batted in. Mazzara and Andrus were the two regulars that were in the lineup yesterday for the Rangers. And neither of those guys are in there today, but everybody else is. So Jeff Bannister will. Get guys a little bit of rest anyways as the final week of the season progresses and the Rangers get ready for postseason. I think Elvis Andrus uh, yesterday proved that his hitting is okay. First time ever to hit two home runs in a game. Two pitch just a little bit outside to Desmond. Carlos Beltran to follow. Rangers are 92 and 63. They're going to win the season series against the A's. It's been fairly close. The Rangers are 10 and 8 against the Athletics. And a swing and a miss, and that's a strikeout for Jarrell Cotton. And that's a great changeup that he throws. And even with two strikes, sometimes hitters will shorten up, but his changeup is so good, it comes out just like his Back fastball, the pulls the string, and Desmond that's the swing hit. that you get from Number Ian Desmond 36. on a great changeup from Close. Jarrell oh, Cotton. Exmo brought to you by Cash Creek Casino Resort. You know, some would say that Jarrell Cotton is young and Really hasn't pitched a lot, but if he can do what he's done already at this major league level, forget about how old he is and how much he's pitched because he has been outstanding so far and he's faced some good teams. The Angels, of course, they had their main lineup in there, and the Royals and the Astros both trying to reach the wild card. He pitched against those teams and pitched well. Slice toward left, Davis over. He's got it and a nice three up three down inning for Jarrell Cotton. He needed just seven pitches. Bottom of the first coming up from the Coliseum.
right now on CSN Plus, which can be found on Comcast Channel 105 and High Def Channel 780, AT&T Channel 1768, DirecTV Channel 698-1. If you can't find CSN Plus, log on to CSNCalifornia.com or call your local cable provider. Raiders post game live. Raiders win another thriller, going right down to the last play again. Here's the lineup for the Athletics today. Joey Wendell, Stephen Boat, Ryan Healy, and then Davis, Alonzo Simeon, followed by Maxwell, Eibner, and Matt Olson. Olson looking for that first big league hit. Well, maybe he can get it against Kobe Lewis because it took the A's nine innings to finally get a hit off him back in uh, mid-June. But a good pitcher. He works quickly. The, actually, A's beat him in his last start in Texas. Of course, the Rangers and A's played each other last weekend and right back, so the A's seeing the same pitchers as they saw last weekend. Except this weekend, the A's have not scored yet. First pitch to Joey Wendell down around the knees, first strike. Well, you wonder if, since at least it's been lined up two weeks in a row now with Hamels, Darvish, and Lewis, it makes you wonder if that's the way they would go into the postseason. Possible, I guess. I'd say it's a very good possibility. Gomez fighting the sun. The other starter would be Martin Perez, the left hander. So one out here in the bottom of the first, the umpires tonight or today, Gabe Morales calling balls and strikes. Paul Nauer at first. Crew chief Jerry Meals at second. Chris Conroy is at third. And defensively for Texas, Gomez, Desmond, and Hoying in the outfield. Beltre, Alberto, Odour, Moreland on the infield. Jonathan Lucroy is your catcher. So with one out, Stephen Vogt steps up. Vogt is the designated hitter today. Hayes with a 66 and 88 record. Seven games left after today. By the way, it's very nice that uh, right field Will came by to say hello to you. Came all the way below here to say hello to you. And thank you for the kind words yesterday. Yeah. We're just trying to help him out. So Vogt is retired. He had to walk a long way to get here from where he sits normally. He had to walk a long way to be told to stop dancing. <laughs> but he's a good guy. Chuckled about it. So here's Ryan Healy. Ryan Healy at 295 with 11 home runs, 31 RBIs. One for eight in this series so far. He's have only had 12 hits in the series, and of course, They've been shut out both games. He's have now been shut out 11 times this year. So a frustrating weekend so far. Certainly you don't like to see a team celebrate on your home field, but it does happen, and there's not a lot you can do about that. Maybe more frustrating is getting shut out two games in a row, especially after what they did on that seven-game road trip where they were just Knocking the ball all over the place. So eight runs and 25 hits in the last five games. And one for 29 with runners in scoring position during this five game losing streak. One for 29. That's hard to do. Very hard to do. And I, I don't know, it's, it, 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 it's the first time I've ever seen a team struggle so badly at home. It just uh, it's just not something that you expect to see. And, and more than anything it's been kind of the offense more than the pitching pitching has been very good. You have to score runs. There's a line drive and a base hit. So Ryan Healy two out single. Now he got the breaking ball with two strikes and hit it off the end of the bat, but just enough over the leap of Alberto at shortstop. Even Elvis Andrews would not have been able to get that one. A good two strike hit by Ryan Healy, who's proving that he can play at this level. He's put up some great numbers in the second half. So here's Chris Davis at 250 with 40 homers, 99 RBIs. Pitch to Davis just a bit inside. 
Chris Davis, fourth in the league in home runs, tied for 10th in RBIs, eighth in strikeouts. If there's ever a day to hit a home run because of the weather, this would be it. This is the type of weather that hitters love at the Coliseum. This gets Kobe Lewis, number 39, in Arlington last Sunday. And as he spoke to us in the postgame show, celebrating his 40 home runs, he said he made an adjustment. He let the ball travel to him farther and ended up hitting home run because he struck out the first time against Kobe Lewis. The breaking ball, one and two. That's the Kobe Lewis breaking ball. He'll keep throwing it. Mark Trumbo is going to be tough to catch. He's got 45 home runs. Dozier and Encarnacion, 42 each. Setting up the inside, and a high fastball came out across the plate. Now the Ed's are going to finish their 2016 season on the road and probably polar opposite weather conditions in the two cities, in Anaheim and Seattle. Anaheim it's supposed to be 100 tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I saw that. And then this weekend in Seattle coming up, it's supposed to rain. And be in the 40s and 50s and 60s. So. No swing. Two and two the count. Thankfully, the Mariners have a roof. And here's the check swing, and he held it for the first base umpire, Paul Nart, who decided it was not a swing. Just got a piece of it, did Chris Davis? Ball was out away from him. Well, I would have to think they are going to stay away from Chris Davis. However, even though the home run against Kobe Lewis was pulled to left center in Arlington, he is powered to the opposite field as we have seen throughout the season. So two and two, the count. Going set up inside again. And that one is belted to left field. Gomez backs up. He's there. He's got it side retired. So a hit and a runner left. No score after one between the A's and the Rangers. SN California is brought to you by AAA. Get a free A stadium blanket with any new AAA membership. Visit a participating AAA branch today. Restrictions apply. Beautiful look at Jack London Square. That's the man himself. Jay London. <laughs> so Jarrell Cotton had a nice three up, three down inning. As he faces Beltre, Odour, and Lucroy.
Beltre. 31 homers and 100 RBIs. Well, Kendall Graveman said it best when he said he wanted to pitch against the Red Sox to challenge and kind of see where he sets himself up in the age rotation, which is very good considering he's won 10 games. But I think for Jarrell Cotton facing the team today, if he had pitched yesterday, he would not have faced the same lineup yesterday. Not to say that that was going to be easy yesterday, which he's found out wasn't. And that one is yep. down the left field line and foul. Hit off the top of the wall foul. Fortunately off the end of the bat and even more fortunate. Nice. Oh At the 93rd birthday. Congratulations. Happy birthday. <laughs> Drop the side so we can see you. Yeah, that's great. 93rd birthday and out of a baseball game. I guess if you're 93, you can kind of dictate what you want to do on your birthday. So two and two the count. Pitch is hit into left field, and that's a base hit. Pretty good job of hitting. That was the changeup, but Beltre went down to get it. Well, one of our favorite people, Harold Miller. There's Harold. He's the gentleman now who, when you walk in the lunchroom, he is there to greet you. 50th anniversary for Harold Miller to came here with the Raiders in 66, and that's 2000, and that's the best ceremonial first pitch we've ever seen, Harold. Come on up here and be on the air too, even though he walks down and says, Are you on the air in the middle of the inning? Why not? Harold, you can do whatever you want. Healy hustling over, cannot quite get it. An effort by Ryan Healy. Well, Harold Miller has been down in the, the lounge for years, and he is the one to welcome everybody as Ryan Healy enjoying the foul territory here at the Coliseum. A long run sliding into a warning track. Great effort. A lot of foul territory. He's going down to Anaheim in Seattle. You can just look at it and see it's a foul ball in the seats. But Lounge Louis. Louis Peralta was there for Louis, many years. Yeah. And uh, Hank at the elevator. Yeah, Hank at the elevator. And Louis' son was a bat boy back in the 70s. And so Lounge Louis. Although it, two two absolutely wonderful gentlemen. Absolutely. But I would say personality wise a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Louis was grumpy but extremely yeah. lovable. Harold is just the happiest yeah. man in the world. It's great. He should be you know he, he's telling me he's exercising lifting weights and doing sit ups doing all kinds of stuff you know he said got to stay in shape yet he he walks the pitch 60 feet 6 inches places it in the catcher's mitt for his first ceremony of ceremony of first pitch so. Congratulations 50 years and nice at the A's recognized Harold Miller in his 50th anniversary. And that one to Orlando who's going to tag first <laughs> and now he's going to go for the rundown. Yeah that's classy there. And Beltre will eventually be tagged <laughs> out at some spot on the diamond. <laughs> and he gets closer to the pitcher's bound than first base. And that's going to be. <laughs> we'll call it a fun double play. How about that? Well, how about Alonzo? He had the ball that he'd let drop and almost turned a double play. This time he faked as he knew what was going to be happening. So he goes back, touches the bag, gets Beltre in a run down. Cotton gets the ball. You want to keep the pitcher out, especially as Beltre runs towards home plate on the grass. And umpire saying he's out of the baseline. And Cotton <laughs> having a little fun. And a day, I'm sure, for. Yonder Alonso is not a lot of fun as he was very distraught as we all were with the passing of Major League pitcher but this man has fun all the time and that is Adrian Beltre. First pitch to Jonathan Lucroy is in first strike to Jarrell Cotton. Lucroy good numbers 293 23 home runs 78 RBIs. The home run number is a career best for Lou Croy. He had 13 with the Brewers. He's hit 10 with the Texas Rangers. 10 in 41 games. 
Give him a lot of credit because what he's done offensively, he's done equally as well catching and handling a pitching staff, especially taking over a pitching staff on August the 1st, following the trade, trying to learn a team that's going to go to postseason. He's done a, a very good job. I think the biggest thing for him, taking charge and having the reputation of being a good catcher, both offensively and defensively. And when you take over a pitching staff that's accustomed to seeing certain catchers behind the plate and they see a new one. But he's done a, an excellent job getting the confidence in the the pitcher is going with basically how he's going to call a game. And he got him swinging. There's the changeup from Cotton. So the double play and then a strikeout and the Rangers get nothing in the second inning. Harold <laughs> what a man. <laughs> Beautiful. And a very warm Sunday afternoon here at the Coliseum. It'll be Alonzo, Simeon, and Maxwell against Colby Lewis. First pitch moves outside to Alonzo, hitting 253 with seven home runs and 53 RBIs. And that one is dropped into right field for a base hit. So Yonder Alonzo with the base hit, playing with a heavy heart as Ray mentioned in fact everybody is around Major League Baseball unbelievably sad this yeah. is it's really kind of hard to comprehend Jose Fernandez truly really one of the best pitchers in all of baseball was killed in some type of boating accident last night they found him this morning unfortunately and I don't know there's just not a whole lot to say there's really nothing I mean, I mean this it's is a young sad. man who was terrific yeah. and by all accounts was born in Cuba, made it over to the United States. So a, a Cuban star playing in Miami is a very, very big deal. And that almost adds to the tragedy of it all. Although there's 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 plenty there already. You said it's a record 38 and 17, rookie of the year, and had Tommy John surgery, coming back, throwing great. And the real sad part is that his wife is pregnant with her first baby girl. So every ballpark around Major League Baseball today, and including right here at the Coliseum, had a moment of silence for Jose Fernandez, just 24 years old. And with Yonder Alonso from Miami, I'm sure he knew Jose sure. Fernandez, Danny Valencia from Miami. Baseball players are a pretty close-knit group, and then if just in general, because they're all professional baseball players, but if add to the fact that they come from the same community that makes it even more of a bonding thing for a lot of players so it's a tough day for Yonder Alonso I'm sure and 
And as expected, the Marlins canceled or postponed the game today against the Braves. And just couldn't even imagine trying to play baseball. Danny Valencia, I'm sure that's yeah. on his mind as well. Two and two the count to Marcus Simeon. Pop up, it's going to be a long run. Hoying dives and it's off his glove. Not quite sure what Rognet Odor was doing. He really was not. It looked like he was going after it real hard. And Hoying just kept running and running and running and he could not quite get it, but it seemed like a ball that at some point Odor may have been able to catch, but you're gonna watch just stops going for it here. And I mean, to me, that's a ball that Odor could have caught. Yeah, he quit on it. Hoying actually looked at Odor, expecting him to catch the ball. And he got it in his glove. Fortunately, it bounded far enough away from him because Alonzo thought it was going to be caught actually in the glove. And as he tried to squeeze the glove, ball up into the webbing and then popped out far enough away that Alonzo could get to second. But I agree, that's a ball that should have been caught and probably by Odor, considering he was the closest to the ball. A's will take it. First and second, nobody out. Maybe they can get on the board. Here's Maxwell. First pitch outside to Bruce Maxwell hitting 257 with a homer and 12 RBIs getting a chance to catch a little bit more here in the final two or three weeks of the season. So the ace getting a close up look at Maxwell. I think too when you're evaluating a, a, a backup catcher Ray you you evaluate the whole game and Maxwell looks like He's got a pretty good idea at the plate, but you probably evaluate what he does from the defensive side a little bit more. And I think that's exactly what they want to try to see from him. Because the one thing about the, the A's, of course, Josh Fegley had to finish his season with knee surgery and had some difficulties with his knee. So Bob Melvin, former catcher himself, managing, knowing that. At one time had a great platoon and vote and Fegley. Now Fegley's out. Maxwell, a left handed hitter, likes Stephen Vogt. Good swing there by Maxwell. But I think what has happened, and we have seen in this homestand with Stephen Vogt receiving the Dave Stewart Community Service Award and also voted by his peers, the Jump Catfish Hunter Award, says a lot about Stephen Vogt and his leadership on this team. In the clubhouse, on the bench, on the field. Just don't win those awards when you're voted by your peers unless you are somebody special. So now, full count to Maxwell with Brett Eitner waiting in the on deck circle. Good opportunity here for the Athletics. Pitch foul to the screen. So the last time the A's scored a run was Wednesday in the ninth inning. Is that correct? Unearned run. All right, there you go. Stephen Vogt ground ball out too. He let it go through his legs and so Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's a that's a long time. Yeah. I'm throwing the off day in there, but. Flair left center and Alberto can't get it and the A's are going to be on the board. So they will take it at this point as Bruce Maxwell drops one in for an RBI hit one nothing athletics. Well, Alonzo great job he read it he said to heck with it I'm going to run hopefully it's going to fall. As Alberto went out ball off the end of the bat. Not surprised that Lewis gave a breaking ball three and two. Flared it out, but Alonzo taking off. This is nobody out. And that's how close Alberto came to turning into maybe even a triple play. Alonzo saw it, said, I'm gone. It scores easily. And on the third base is Marcus Simeon, who was also seeing the ball in front of him. That's a triple play waiting to happen. So good news for the A's that dropped. And they get first and third with the run in. So still nobody out. Maxwell has RBI number 13. It's Eichner. Eichner takes inside. 
Eibner had 207, six homers, 21 RBIs. Those are combined numbers between the, the Royals and the Athletics. 0 for 4 in this series. A 1 0 breaking ball, and Eibner just could not lay on. Well, they saw Kobe Lewis last weekend. And if you've watched any video, if you listen to Darren Bush, the ace hitting coach, one thing he will say, don't even think about looking fastball in a, in a normal count because Kobe Lewis will mix his pitches. He's not overpowered with his fastball anyway, as we showed in Texas. But he tries to nibble the corners. And start last weekend, of course, he walked five batters. And he was just returning from the disabled. It's just about his second start. So he's trying to get himself in shape with this start plus another one before the end of the season. And now two and two. And the interest in the A's evaluating Terrell Cotton as a rookie. And also the Rangers are looking at their veteran and Kobe Lewis. Sure, they're evaluating. He's a free agent. Yeah. Kobe Lewis. He was last year and they re-signed him. He won 17 games last year. I think he's a pretty good pitcher. Yeah. And if you need a veteran, you go into postseason. They have one in Hamels, and, and Darvish has been around. And if they could throw these three. Moreland thought about coming home. Now he's going to have to hustle the first. And they got him. Well, Aldredi's not so sure either is Aldredi. Yeah. Is coming in to score is Marcus Simeon for the A's second run. Now it's a matter of whether there was an out at first or not. Well, Moreland started to go to the plate with Simeon going on contact and then hustled back with. The hustling Eibner. And uh, fans are reacting. And I think there's a lot of confusion. The umpire, you know, did so he hit he the, went for the tag. Yeah, he went for the tag instead of the base. And if he, well, the way his glove came back would indicate that he tagged it right there. It's foot on the bag, though, before he tagged it. So he, Bob Melvin's still trying to decide this may be a pretty good look. Well, there, it looks like he tags him kind of in the front, but it looked like he may have been safe. <laughs> See, the tag is not on the side. It's a little more right. around to the front. It's a tough call, and Bob says, let's do it. Let's take a look at it. I gave Morales the home plate umpire. I actually walked over, and, you know, this is one of the things, and you have to respect the time that it takes for, in this case, Adam Rode, the video coordinator, to look at the various angles. He's got a whole bunch of screens to watch and try to determine whether to make the call or not. And you know for him to do that and that's why you know they're going to give the timing on the actual New York making the call. But the bottom line is how long did it take to decide if they're going to go to it or not. Now is this that he tagged him there. And he looks safe there. He looks safe there because it looked like he tagged him yeah, after he hit it because Runner was ruled out. Yeah. You know, if he slides, he's safe. <laughs> he decided to go straight into it and do a little hook slide. Touch the base with your hand because Moreland was going for the body instead of the, the bag, which all he had to do was go to a slide and hit the bag with his foot. Really similar to what Chris Smith did and has done a couple of times. Runs going to score regardless. Just a matter of whether the A's have a Runner at first and second, and nobody out. So tough call. Yeah. Uh, afraid with the call going to out, and that might have been with Paul Nart, the first base umpire, getting kind of mixed up with the pitcher and the first baseman, then making the call. And that's one of those is it definitive enough to make the, the change? We'll find out right now as they're removing the headsets. Out. So it will be an RBI ground out. So the A's do the get the second the run. Runner is out. Ibner will not get a hit. He will be charged with a ground out. But still a productive out as Maxwell goes to second. Back. Here's Matt Olson. Olson. So Olsen looking for that first hit. He's 0 for 7. He's walked four times. He has struck out once.
First pitch is in for a strike. Olsen is, we've been told, pretty patient hitter, walks a lot. And will strike out a fair amount and big, strong guy, good power. And I would say that scouting report is going to follow him around that he is a patient hitter. He can make a lot of first pitch strikes thrown with fastball and maybe He's, at that point you change. Yeah exactly. If that's what starts happening yeah. with a guy like Olsen because. He's going to thrive in the big leagues. If he's going to thrive in the big leagues, it's because he's hitting the ball to the ballpark, right. not because he's walking. That's right. That's the, the good thing if he could recognize the off speed pitch there and didn't swing at a pitcher's pitch. But bottom line, right now, two and one, you have for a fastball. You may not get it, but at least be, 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 uh, be prepared to hit something that's in the middle of the plate. One pitch high three and one. So two runs in for the A's here in the bottom of the second. And that one just a touch low. A good take by Olsen. Doug Brokale, the pitching coach, is going to come out. Kobe Lewis has already allowed four hits and a walk in the game and the two runs. Gabe Morales will break it up. Now batting second baseman. Number 52, Joey Wendell. So here's Joey Wendell, who in the bottom of the first hit a fly ball to left field. So RBI opportunity for Joey Wendell. Curve and Wendell went after it, rolls it foul. I think if Kobe Lewis gets an early strike, first pitch strike with that curveball, he says, Thank you. Yeah, because he, he found out with Olsen five pitches and all fastballs and didn't get a strike. Trying to get him to swing, he would not. And the first pitch curveball, probably not a strike, but he got a swing anyway. Line drive, left field base hit. Here comes Gomez. Picks it up, flips it back in. Maxwell stops at third. So four hits in the inning for the A's. And that's Joy Wendell at his best right there. Pitch away from him. It was up. Kind of flattens the swing. He's got a nice swing where he now flattens it out as he uh, makes his approach and a uh, solid base hit to left field. We're going to see a lot of that from Joy Wendell. And so I just can only get to third base. But the one thing uh, A's are fortunate to have Ricky Henderson on the staff. And of course, works a lot with the minor leaguers. But it's something that Joey Wendell, he can talk to Ricky Henderson about being a leadoff hitter and what importance of uh, being the leadoff hitter. So Nick Martinez starts to throw out in the Rangers bullpen. Kobe Lewis, a little out of whack right now. In for a strike to Stephen Boat. Boat with the ground out to short in the first inning. Well, right now, the best pitch for Kobe Lewis is his curveball, slider. Fastball is really a pitch that he's not overpowered with. That he's tried to nibble the corners, and the A's aren't biting so far. Missed again, one and one. Maxwell at third, Olsen at second, Wendell at first. Away, but misses. So he's 
seen Kobe Lewis when he has terrific control, but that has not been the case so far. That's just from this inning. 14 balls, 15 strikes. So about to throw his 30th pitch in the inning. And Vogt rips one to right, and that's a base hit. It's down the line. It'll score one. It'll score two. And they're going to wave Joey Wendell home. Here comes the throw to the plate. Luke Croy puts the tag and save. So it's a three run double for Stephen Vogt, and the A's lead five to nothing. Well, let's hope. The throw beat him. It's just a matter, according to Game Morales, that Joey Wendell got around the tag with his hand. We'll see. First of all, good hitting by Stephen Vogt, pulling the outside pitch to drive in at least two, and we hope three. Wendell read it perfectly from first base, and Wash sent him because of that. And the ball coming back in, strong throw by Odor. You see if we can see the slide. And Dave Morales said he either missed him or he got around the tag. Something happened. Two are going to score. And again, a lot of time being taken. Did a hand get on before he got him? This will be your best look. Well, if he missed him on the elbow and got him on the side, that's the key right there because his hand is on the plate. I got to look at it. Let's see if he tags him before there before his hand gets on or does it get him. He's safe. He got him after I think safe there. I think he look, I got him at the key was right here. You can't really tell. Did he get him on the left side and the elbow before his hand and the other shot we had showed him hitting and missing the elbow getting on the side. This one right here. Let's see if this is it. Check the hand hands on the plate. I don't think he tagged him yet. But he called safe. So if it's not definitive enough. If they if they look at that one, they'll call him out. If they look at the other one, they should call him safe just because he missed him initially on the elbow. Right here, this is the one. His hand right there is on the plate, and it looks like he had not tagged him yet. He missed him on the elbow and got him up on the shoulder. See what they see in New York. They have enough angles. And actually surprising that look I just sat there he didn't really jump up and indicate that he got him that's why they depended on the video coordinator to, to look at. So in one inning can both teams lose their challenge. Well, We're going to find out here soon. They're showing it up on the big board everybody's checking it out. The crowd seems to think that Joey Wendell was safe. safe. He is. Great angles, guys, because that great, great camera shot. Because they evidently saw. Well, down in the corner, and it really is a great relay. The only thing for Odor, his throw to the first base side. And Stephen Volk gets three runs batted in. With a a double. So vote now 53 RBIs, and the A's have scored five here in the second inning. So both clubs have lost their challenges. Inside to Ryan Healy, still only one out, and even that one out, which was a ground up to first, produced a run. And Healy is the eighth man to bat. Pitch foul straight back. These are getting some pretty good looks at Colby Lewis right now. I'm oh, just thinking about Ron Washington at third base. He haven't scored in two days. He's been very quiet at third base as coach. And why not? Let's go make, make up him, for it. Yeah, make him make the the good relays. And if the throw is on the plate, Luke Croy did not have to reach for it and go for the ball and reach back towards the plate. But not easily. But Ron Washington. On the outfield strength of going to Odor and the door throw just offline. Good pitch there by Colby Lewis. One and two the count. 
go back to this inning when Simeon was hitting. If Odor makes that catch, it's probably a moot point the whole inning. Who knows? So one and two. On long inning for Colby Lewis. Another foul ball. He's making work big time. <laughs> Several missed it. Ended up off the top of the bullpen roof and onto the field. The old bullpen roof. Huh? Yeah. Where would the relievers be without it? Probably better off. <laughs> really? <laughs> There's hardly any there. Well, when when Chris Smith got hit, when he had the towel on his head, the ball that got past Scotty. He had his talent because he said I'm not going to pitch today so I'll let you guys stay underneath the, the overhang get some shade I'll go sit in the sun. There's not a lot of shade you have to lean back. Scotty going to be out front he's sleeping. <laughs> he's out all night look at him. I think he is. Emo just woke him up. High fly ball left field into the corner Gomez shading his eyes. And that baby is gone, and it's a seven run inning for the A's. Just a towering drive that actually cleared the wall by 20 for home run number 12 for Healy. Is that a moonshot or what? I mean, that was unbelievably high. It's the second time he's done that this year, but this one is, was as high as we've ever seen. Lift off and down the left field line, and he just kept carrying. And he's a powerful young man, number 12, into the barbecue terrace. So that is going to do it for Kobe Lewis. When it's time for change, think speedy oil change and auto service. Your oil change, tune up and repair. Experts. Season ticket memberships are on sale right now. Whether you want to renew your membership or join the party, visit athletics.com slash 2017. You'll find all the benefits that A's membership has to offer, including early bird incentives, exclusive experiences, half price parking, flexible ticket exchange program, and more. You can even lock in your 2017 city location. Visit athletics.com slash 2017 and join the party today. So Nick Martinez comes in here in the second inning. So early departure for Colby Lewis and a tough day for his ERA. Seven earned runs allowed in an inning and a third. So that is why Martinez is in the game. Two and three ERA at six. Martinez has been in the big leagues. In fact, last year quite a bit. He was started quite a few games. And unfortunately for the A's, uh, same with Colby Lewis. But Dick Martinez has pitched extremely well against the A's and his. Time with the Rangers, but Kobe Lewis today was not his day. 52 pitches, an inning in the third, 7 7 7. With a 
walk and no strikeouts. Back to back day starts for Kobe Lewis. Back to back Sundays. Maybe just too much time off. One and two now to Chris Davis. Ninth man to bat in the inning. Davis lined out to end the first. And another breaking ball, and Davis strikes out. So that is the second out in the second inning. And a hard slider yeah, staying Chris away Davis. from Chris Davis. So with two odds, here's Yonder Alonso who opened this inning up with a base hit to right field. Fastball is high. Six hits and seven runs in the inning for the Athletics. Jarrell Cotton, he has sat there exactly 29 minutes and enjoyed every minute of it. <laughs> All 29 minutes have been good for Jarrell Cotton. Trying to hydrate. He at least looks at him like, what are you doing? Why are you drinking so much water? <laughs> Toward third, Beltre has it. On to first, side retired. And the A's do major damage against Colby Lewis. They score seven runs on six in. So as we head to the third, the A's with a seven to nothing lead over the Rangers. So everybody had a hand in the A's seven run second inning. Ryan Healy with a two run homer. And it's seven nothing athletics third inning. So we'll see how. Jarrell Cotton handles the big offensive outburst by the athletics. Shutdown innings. He's four for four. Fourth big league start for Cotton. Facing Moreland, Hoying, and Alberto. Bottom three. He's given up a hit, a couple of strikeouts. Amazing how many things, so many things a young pitcher, pitchers in general have to experience at this level. And for Jarrell Cotton now, big lead. 30 minutes or so sitting on the bench. How was he going to pitch the next inning, even with a shutdown? We appreciate the run support. 
Forget it. Forget it. <laughs> Jeez. I think he just wants to get a spread set. Somebody just pointed Healy and say balls in the stands. At the top of the dugout. Did hustle over and sometimes with the left hand of the ball does come back. But that just kept going. So two and one to Moreland. That ball took a kind yeah. of a strange ricochet and they're making sure everybody's okay down there right in that front row. Where the top of the, the top of the dugout and then took the funny hop or bounce into the stance. So hope everybody's all right. Clip somebody just a little bit. Now there's a change up that looks like a screwball. That ball started at Moreland and then floated into the middle of the strike zone. And that's what they're saying about Jarrell Cotton. When he throws a change up, it does act like a screwball, although it is more or less a circle change. 2 2 pitch. Here it comes. And it's lined softly foul. Maybe a broken bat. Indeed, it is a broken bat. Couple of hot dogs. And still able to get a souvenir. Loaded up hot dogs, too, I might add. There it is and a swing and a miss. The changeup, that one really just kind of floated in there. Moreland waved at it. Now three strikeouts all on the changeup and the one hit a changeup as well, but you know, he's swinging his motion. Right fielder. This is gonna happen. Happened to Desmond in the first. That Luke Croy last inning. And now Moreland. Well, it's the kind of changeup because it, it even the velocity is, is a little bit slower than most. Change. It almost has that floating look yeah. to it. I think you're going to get some funky swing yeah. at it. Yeah. Lefties hitting just 045. Well, and what you're going to see probably similar to Jamie Moyer, of course, a great left hander with a changeup. With this type of a changeup. You maybe see more right handers instead of lefties because of the success he has against lefties, but it's not going to take away his changeup. And same with Moyer. He started throwing it more against lefties, and Cotton will throw it against the righties as well. One or two to Jared Hoying. Hoying hitting just 214, but he's had a good series. Hits, couple of doubles, couple of runs scored. Swing and a miss on the changeup. That went at 76 miles an hour. Well, he starts it again, and it comes out of his hand. It, it may be amazing. Shortstop. But it's a circle Number change. Two, he described it in Alberto. the thumb, index finger, forming a circle over the, the baseball. and. He pulls down on it, and when he pulls down on it, that gives it the, the screwball effect, but more than anything, just the change of speed. So he gets ahead with a 94 mile an hour fastball to Hanser Alberto. Reading about Jarrell Cotton when he, he's called him up, and he said that he's been throwing that changeup since he was a kid. Yeah. And really, as a, as a young pitcher, if you learn fastball changeup, two pitches, that's all you need. Fastball changeup, probably not quite as hard on your arm as exactly. a youngster either. Exactly. That's the whole purpose of throwing the two pitches the same overhand delivery. And you develop a changeup from right hander. And Jared Parker, one of the best we've seen with the A's from the right handed standpoint, now with this young man, Jarrell Cotton, with a high fastball. A little pop up toward Alonzo who drifts into foul territory. He grabs it. Good inning for Jarrell Cotton. A couple of strikeouts. Bottom of the third coming up. 7 0 Athletics.
first through eighth grade students the chance to earn two free tickets to a game with the A's Mathletics Workbook program, which engages students to solve baseball-related equations. For more information on this unique educational program, visit athletics.com slash mathletics. Bottom of the third, Marcus Simeon, Bruce Maxwell, and Brett Eibner. Nick Martinez came in, and he got the final two outs of the second inning. Grounded fair, backhanded by Beltre. His throw across the diamond is right there. Nice play. So one out. Greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. Yeah, Hamilton Darvish last two starts, Friday and Saturday, both very good. But remember last weekend in Texas, not good. So I'm sure the Rangers had a close eye on Hamels and Darvish, as they will be their top two guys come postseason. So they were. Glad to see what those two guys did in the first two games of this series. <laughs> Darvish and Hamill sitting in the stands today, <laughs> taking the day off. Kind of like they used to, right? When the yeah. starting pitchers would chart the pitches from right behind. Oh, there he is. But they wouldn't have their uniforms no. on. They'd be in street clothes. Base hit left field, Maxwell. Shifted. Bruce Maxwell, two for two. He's really been swinging a hot bat since a little bit of a slow start offensively. Well, they're shifting him for some reason, and he just takes a fastball. And you know, if they, they have watched him, and they've seen him use the big part of the field up the middle left field. That would not especially like to see the shortstop behind second base, but Maxwell will take it. Maxwell now has 16 hits in his last 41 at bats. Eibner takes a first pitch strike. And this one sky towards shallow left. Alberto out. Both guys fighting the sun, including Gomez, the left fielder, but Alberto stays with it. Makes the catch. It's nice like Alberto wanted to let Gomez know that he had it. He kept putting up his hand, but he also wanted to use his hand to shade his eyes. But able to make the play. This is a tough son as always. Most of the guys got the glasses on. It would be a day to have them on. And that is hit number one for Matt Olson. A hard hit ground ball through the right side. So congratulations to Matt Olson. He has a big league hit. Major league base hit. Congratulations, Matt. So that'll make him feel good. Up next, number 52. Had a handful of those this year, yeah. haven't we? Huh? Handful of rookies this year, too. But the amazing thing, yeah, Maxwell hits the ball to left field where the shortstop would have been. Olsen hits the ball where the second baseman would have been. Musgrove in with the Astros. And the Astros would have had a no hitter for nine innings, except two balls were hit, one by Wendell to left field where the third baseman would have been. And Smolensky where the second baseman would have been. So shifts are good. But in those cases, and especially today, these two runners have reached base because they've beaten the shift. Just making sure it's official. Yeah. Authenticate everything right now. Just making a miss by Wendell. Olsen aggressively going after the first pitch in this at bat and like his first at bat when he walked with Kobe Loso on the mound. And right there right in between turned out to be the shortstop of the second baseman. 
think it'll be interesting next spring to see if Steve Vucinich brings out number 13 for Matt Olson. Because the good Matt Olson just said, I take whatever they put in my locker, and Steve <laughs> Vucinich put number 13. Big decisions for Boos. Yeah. Some people just do not like to wear 13. Some organizations do not like to have players wear 13. But Olsen wears it because Boos put it in his locker. Wendell slaps one foul left side. Headed for the second level. A Rod Ward with the Yankees for many years. Yeah. Actually, the time he was there. Percy also wore one to three when he's with the Mariners in uh -huh. Texas and three Babe Ruth wouldn't want to give it up. He probably wanted a three in there somewhere. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Babe Ruth's number is not going to be unretired. So what you're saying is there's probably not a team. That has a retired jersey number of 13. I can't think of one. I'm sure there's not. I was told many years ago by Matt Keo, who played in Japan, he said the number 13 was lucky in Japan. Huh. The number four, as far as the Japanese were concerned, I think he said the number four was considered to be the 13. Unlucky for them. Gotcha. So we. So four is. Four to them is 13 yeah, to us. And the Kishi Ibo wore 13, and I asked Matt about it, and he said, it's, it's a lucky number. Huh. Two and two, the count to Joey Wendell. Two on, two out. Curve, strike three called on the outside corner. So the A's get a couple of hits, strand a pair. We are headed to the fourth inning, seven nothing. A's over the Rangers. SN California is brought to you by your Bay Area Hyundai dealers. Great deals on amazing cars are going on now at your Hyundai dealer. Visit buyhyundai.com today. Hot day in the Bay Area. A's leading 7 0, fourth inning. And the A's did not score a run in the first two games of the series. They scored seven in the second inning today. First pitch to leadoff man Gomez. He is a strike from Cotton, who's got four strikeouts in three innings. Little pop up toward Alonzo. He's got it. One out. Cotton is mixing his pitches great. Both caught him the first two games. Maxwell caught him the third game and catching this afternoon. 
But either way, I know Stephen Vogt no, was raving think, about him in his major league debut, the, talking about his change up and how well he was throwing it. But he just threw a little cut fastball there, and last two, as a matter of fact, off the end of bat by Alberto and Gomez to get that a weak pop ups to first. Facing Desmond, who struck out in the first inning. And he goes after the first pitch, hits one very high to center. Eibner into right center. He grabs it two outs. Fastball change today for Jarrell Now Cotton. batting, number 36, Carlos Beltran. That's why Desmond swung at a first pitch fastball because he struck out on a changeup. And you may be seeing hitters trying to get to this young man early with the fastball if he's going to throw it instead of waiting to maybe get in the changeup for a strikeout pitch. And that's why Jarrell can throw it first pitch just as easily. A little bit outside to Carlos Beltran, who swung at the first pitch in his first at bat and hit a fly ball to left field. Beltran did not play yesterday. He was 0 for 3 with a walk on Friday. According to the Rangers notes and it all, it's almost hard to believe but it wasn't long ago Carlos Beltran had an 0 for 32 stretch. <laughs> Would that be impossible for yes, this guy. Yes. <laughs> very impossible. <laughs> very very <laughs> impossible. He grounds out there. So another good inning for Jarrell Cotton bottom of the fourth coming up 7 nothing easily. Dot com at bat app. You can stay up to the moment, any moment, with game day, live game video highlights, stat cast news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone and your tablet. Nick Martinez back to work. It's the bottom of the fourth inning. Vote Healy and Davis. Even Vote had a big hit in that seven run second inning, a three run double. Lined it into the right field corner. In the first inning, vote grounded to short. Yeah, Stephen vote very hard on himself, expecting stuff to do more this year offensively, but getting a chance to DH more and maybe learning how to DH, which is something that's not easy to do, but found it very easy in the second inning with the bases loaded. Ball down in the corner, handled nicely by Hoying, but the throw in a little bit offline. Luke Croy thought he had made the play and the tag, and he was called safe initially and upheld. Stephen Vogt skies one toward left center field, where Desmond is under it. He's got it. So that'll bring up Ryan Healy, who 
right after that vote double did this a towering drive. That guy looking at that pitch that fastball was inside by Kobe Lewis and he was able to pull his hands in and lift off for him to hit his 12th home run of the season 33 driven in. And realizing there's a lot of foul territory here at the Coliseum and. He's hustled that dirt on his pants from sliding in the morning track. 12 home runs now for Ryan Healy, and he has done that in 65 games. So, can sort of do a little math if you want to. Full yep, season? That's right. 25, 27 home runs, somewhere in that area. Well, as Dave Forrest was telling us yesterday about Matt Chapman. Fine young third baseman in the minor league system. But you, you think about Chapman and Healy and their ability to hit home runs. This ball, really a nice adjustment made by Healy. Oh, Slotted the state up. Straight away center field. So a two strike base hit to left field. A two strike home run to left field. And now a 0 1 slider. The state up and sends it sharply up the middle. So Healy, three for three. Chris Davis. First pitch just a little bit low for Healy. Coming into today, he was sitting on a one for 16. So he has bounced back with three hits today. We keep thinking he's supposed to be getting tired for <laughs> playing in September, and he does not look like it at all. It's amazing to me though the he's called him up all star break that Friday night after the all star break he was in the lineup and he has been in the lineup 65 out of 66 games since then now that that listen that's not easy to do yeah. and he has been very very good and he's worked every day with Ron yeah, Washington that's right. on, on ground balls and, and working before the game even when they don't take batting practice. No swing. I found fastball inside, and Chris Davis started, kind of looped his bat a little bit as it went out, but clearly off the plate. They think about Ryan Healy, not even in spring training. Nope. You know, not, not, at all. <laughs> not even in the media guide, in the front part of the media guide. And here he is in the big leagues, and probably will never see the light of minor leagues again. So proven and, and maybe the work ethic that he has to come up here and play and play hard. He's had success swinging the bat. And maybe one of the most impressive things that he has done, I think, is taken a 96 mile an hour fastball from Jordano Ventura in his side and walked to first base. Wasn't happy. He's got a huge bruise that's going to be there for a while. But he took it, went to first base, and that was it. Now he may get home next week after the season ends and sleep for three straight days. That's a possibility. That's good. We may all do that. Who knows? Yeah, after a long season, players have a tendency to hibernate a little bit. Just at least for the yeah. first week or two. In the hole, backhanded nicely by Alberto. Out at second, Odor back to first and a double play. Nice turn by the. Texas Rangers 6 4 3 on the double play, and that will do it for the A's in the fourth.
brought to you by Naturally Strong, Naturally Beautiful Humble Redwood Lumber and Timbers. Visit GetRedwood.com. 7-0 A's lead. It is the top of the fifth final home game of this 2016 season for the A's. We'll go to Anaheim and then on to Seattle to wrap up the season. First pitch swinging. Beltre hits one towards center field and Ibner squeezes it. So one out, one out. Jarrell Cotton. Now Looks man. like we Three made miles. it. A little Barry Manilow Three reference. It's for you, right? <laughs> Pitchers to begin their careers with three straight outings, five innings pitched or more, and one earned rest, earned run or fewer. I'll get through it. John Henry Johnson, right? You probably remember him. Yeah. Rich Harden and Jarrell Cotton. Yeah. Rich Harden had a similar changeup, although he threw his so hard it looked like a splitter. Yeah, exactly. He kept looking at board, said, "Wow, that's a splitter," and he said, "No, it's a changeup." And Jarrell Cotton's changeup is equally as well, but he doesn't throw it as hard as Rich Harden did. Rich Harden basically used two pitches: fastball, changeup, and that was it. That one is ripped toward right field. Olson. Back over. He's got it. Odor is out. So for Cotton, six and a third against the Angels, five and two thirds against the Royals, six innings against Houston. And so far today, four and two thirds innings. Darrell, Derek Holland warming up and just 43 pitches with two outs in the fifth inning. In his last start, the one where he went six innings, only 75 pitches. Listen, these are being a little bit careful with the young man, and that's completely understandable. He threw 135 minor league innings this year. So he's had a pretty good workload. Good ball strike ratio. There's a liner headed for the left field corner. So Jonathan Lucroy will head into second with a two out double. So Lucroy continues his fine season. 1 0 fastball. He went with the fastball instead of a change up, and perhaps the lead had something to do with that. But right. And the fact he's not thrown a lot of pitches since the A's scored seven innings. But Lucroy, it's one of those. He just said, get the fastball, don't miss it. He didn't. And tall third baseman for the A's, Ryan Healy, almost caught it. So that is just the second hit for Texas. See, LaCroix struck out on a changeup like Desmond did. And Desmond swung at the first pitch, his next at bat, and <laughs> it was LaCroix swing at the second pitch, a fastball. So Moreland gets to take the brunt of it all by getting a first pitch changeup. He's looking fastball. Orland struck out on that changeup in the third inning. Did not look good doing it. Orland in a struggle right now. All for his last nine, two for his last 19, and four for his last 39. So he'd like to try to heat up right before postseason. Drills that one toward Davis, who's right there, comes in a couple steps. He's got it. So Cotton needed just eight pitches to get through the Rangers in the fifth inning.
of your favorite A's players from the past of the 2017 Oakland Athletics Fantasy Camp. Held from January 13th to the 19th at the A's New Spring Training Facility in Mesa, Arizona. It's been a memorable week of baseball alongside legends like Bert Campanaris, Mike Moore, Shooty Babbitt, Dave Stewart, many more. Play baseball every day like a pro and get the scoop on what it's like to be in the big leagues. For more details, go to HendersonBaseball.com or call 509-993-7338. He may go. He's got his uniform already. When it's time for change, think speedy oil change and auto service your oil change tune-up and repair experts. So the new pitcher is Derek Holland. You want to say veteran because he's been around a long time, but still just 29 years old. You know, sadly, Kipe, I did a interview, an interview with Dave Stewart about this time last year, talking about the Upcoming fantasy camp, and in the off season he passed away. It's kind of sad, but they're still having the fantasy camp. It was a business that he had, and they're they're having it again. Alonzo is retired. That's scary. You see things like that. That means the bat. It's like a weapon. Got a serious. Edge on it, sticking in the pit in the grass. But Holland with a good fastball got in the kitchen of Yonder Alonso, and there's the breakage just below the trademark handle in the hand. And Holland with his eyes wide open saying, Get out of the way. In the first strike to Marcus Simeon. Simeon has singled and scored, and he has grounded out. The Rangers been trying to figure out what to do with Derek Holland. You know, Ray, he's been hurt a lot in the last well, three years, really. This year, that pitched a huge amount. Alberto across the diamond, but last year, just 10 games. 2014, just six games. And he's had some good years for the Rangers. But he just says now he just can't stay healthy. No, that's the biggest and thing. He, he's a talented guy, but it's interesting too because the team has club options on Holland for next year and then 2018. So it is decision time. What what will they do? Yeah. Well, you think of two lefties, Holland and Matt Harrison. The other lefty yeah. who had uh, back issues and signed him to a long-term deal. Yeah, and both at one time. You, the, Rangers are thinking, hey, we got two Sorry. young lefties who are both very good, and they're going to be around for a while. And it certainly did not happen with Harrison. And with Holland, he's been around. He just has to stay in the mound. Odor, jump throw. No. Moreland tried to do that. Got a backhanded pick. Could not do it. So it's going to be a hit for Maxwell. He's three for three. Things are going Bruce Maxwell's way. Well, for Bruce Maxwell, he ran as hard as he could. Odor had Moreland come up with it. Probably would have had him, but short hop. He should have really had to throw a little bit about 10 feet out in front of Moreland. Maxwell busting as hard as he could, but those are the catcher's legs. And unfortunately, that happens. Odor, a nice play to keep it going to center field, but not able to complete the play. So Maxwell three for three the A's now have 11 hits today as Eibner steps in Eibner does not have one of those but he does have an RBI RBI ground out in that seven run second inning. Fastball just missed inside. One and one the count. Well, the fastball's inside again with Luke Roy. We saw it with Cole Hamels on Friday night. We've seen him in Texas and lefties. The only one was Martin Perez who pitched in Texas and he went away from the fastball in because he couldn't get it in. So change up, that was a good one. And Moreland calls off Luke Croy, side retired. So Derek Collins, first inning of work is a good one. 7 nothing now as we head to the sixth.
first flight. Most home runs in first 65 games of his career in Oakland history. Mark McGuire, of course, kind of off the charts there. Put some big names on there, and Ryan Healy. 12 home runs in his first 65 games. Not too shabby. Where does Sanchez with Cleveland fit in there? I mean, with New Yankee, York. Yeah. Gosh, what a. He's got his own record pace. Wow. That's hard to do that. I don't even know that he's played that many. Has he played 65 games? I don't, I don't think, think he's so. played as many as Healy has. I think he had something like 19 and 45 games or something. <laughs> It's called bursting onto the scene. Well, it's and called trying to live up to something you've done as a rookie, and can you continue throughout your career? I think the Yankees hope so. But Healy has made his mark in Oakland, and nice move by the Athletics to bring him up to start the second half, and he's played, and given the opportunity, has performed well. Unfortunately, Gary Sanchez is great as he has been the catcher we're talking about for the Yankees the Yankees I think had what you would call a disastrous weekend in Toronto yeah. they lost again today Blue Jays ended up sweeping I take that back they have one more game they have a Monday game right. tomorrow in the air Davis trots in Davis waits he's got it so Hoying is retired yeah the Yankees we're leading going to the bottom of the ninth, but the Blue Jays scored twice today and won it four to three. So again, there's one more game left tomorrow in that series, but the Blue Jays have won nine nothing, three nothing, four to three, and that has pretty much dashed any hopes that the Yankees had. And for the Blue Jays, a much needed win to hold on to that number one wild card spot. In fact, all the games in the American League are done. So we'll Get you the scores and what the standings look like now. Maxwell took a pretty good shot there. A direct hit. And some say this is what caused Joe Maurer to move to first base. Ball hit that hard, and from Maurer ended up in behind home plate up in the stands, and that went off of the mask of Maxwell and ended up near the dugout of the, of the Rangers. To pop Simeon wrestles with it, throws across, and in time. Alberto's pretty fast, and that was not an easy play for Marcus Simeon. You can't charge it, and you don't have time to take a step back and get a better hop. And it almost put him in left field. That's how hard it was hit, but knew once he caught it, hurry and throw, and just barely. That's a hustling Alberto, and then it's a nice play, and almost the second crow hop cost him, but good stretch by Alonzo, as always. Drew Cotton has not had a three ball count all day. A lot of outs on first pitch, one pitch, or first pitch and second pitch. I mean, he's, he's just been dealing. Ryan Rua. First at bat for Rua. He came into the game for Carlos Gomez. Cotton pitch count now 57. What Kendall Graveman called his shutout with under 100 pitches at Greg Maddox shutout? That's right. Hit hard, but right to Joey Wendell. And another three up, three down inning for Jarrell Cotton. Bottom of the six coming up. It's the A's with a seven to nothing lead.
on CSN California is brought to you by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. And by Xfinity. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience TV. 7-0, bottom of the sixth inning. Jarrell Cotton, just another very, very fine outing. Six shutout innings, 58 pitches. So we'll keep an eye on Cotton, see if his afternoon has come to an end. It is possible. So Matt Olson to lead it off. Well, the Derek Holland inning was just one. Andrew Faulkner comes in when it's time for change. Think speedy oil change and auto service, your oil change tune up and repair experts. So Faulkner the lefty. And it's one and one to Olson. Matt Olson got his first big league hit in the third inning. Hard hit ball in the right center field. And he rips this one right to Odor. Odor throws out Olsen. Hard hit ball. Let's go back to the third inning. Here's the big moment for Matt Olsen. Well, they shifted him and uh -huh. it was a on the shortstop. Now, Berto, the shortstop two. trying to make the diving play with Odor pulled over a little bit more. So the first hit. And a switch of the baseballs, and of course, one of the stands, the other one goes to be authenticated, and a trickery. Well, that's all it is. Trickery. Nobody getting loose in the bullpen, guys, so. Good. Maybe uh, <laughs> somebody just going to run in. <laughs> but <laughs> we're told six innings, but maybe, consider the pitch count, he's going to go back. All right, now, did you find out the real important thing today? Is it rookie dress up day today? I do not know. I don't know. It's got to be either this flight or the flight from Anaheim to Seattle. Sure. And if you, if you, <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe the rookies have the veterans dress up because there's more rookies than veterans. Well, it would be quite a show this year because I, I don't I don't even know what I lost count of the amount of rookies. Too many. Yeah. I mean, we have a whole year without any, and this year a roster full of rookies. Well, you can be. I can probably check the roster right now. And let us know as he's quickly going. To well, the uh, stat pack. It's sort of a baseball tradition. Yeah. Veterans buy crazy outfits for the rookies to wear on a road trip. Well, you're looking at the lineup today. How many <laughs> rookies are in the lineup? It's going to be into the seat, so Stephen Vote. Even in the count, one and one. But it looks like there's one of the rookies in Maxwell. Have used 19 rookies overall. They've used 19 well, on the season. There's most of them are here, I would yeah. think. And some. Huh. Yeah, there's there's a bunch, and it's good entertainment value if you get whatever 15, 16 oh. rookies <laughs> dressed up. I mean, there are some clubs that are so veteran oriented that it's barely unless they're September call-ups where they will have any rookies. One rookie is pitching, and it looks like he's going to go off with the seventh, which Faulkner grabs it, fires to first. So Andrew Faulkner has a quick inning, and we are moving to the seventh. Seven nothing A's lead.
game. Terrell Cotton. What a performance already for six innings. Changeup has been outstanding. Sneaky fastball, but the changeup has been the pitch. Four strikeouts, just 58 pitches in six innings, couple of hits. Beltre getting a changeup for a base hit. But he has been great. Just the two hits in six innings. And maybe the pitch count is allowing him to go back out. Regardless, he's going back out. That's the main thing. And he's going to face Desmond, Beltran, and Beltre. So a challenge inning for Jarrell Cotton. First pitch is a fastball first strike to Desmond. Desmond has struck out and hit a fly ball to center field. He's one for six in this series, did not play yesterday. So that's the total numbers updated in his four starts this year. Just 13 hits, three walks, 15 strikeouts in 24 innings pitched. Well, a little one, bit low. One thing we talk about the lineup the Rangers have out. This is their everyday lineup, their regular season, postseason lineup. And you can say, well, Jarrell Cotton doing a good job, but there's a whole bunch of scouts in the stands watching the performance also by Jarrell Cotton and seeing how he's getting Rangers hitters out. And we see more and more scouts, especially teams that are going to be in postseason. And teams that, in the case of the Rangers, have already won the division. So there are teams that could be potentially playing them watching this game today. Simeon has it. Simeon's throw in time to get Desmond. The thing that kind of strikes me with Jarrell Cotton is, yeah, he has the ability to strike guys out. But I mean, he, he's not afraid to pitch to contact. And he doesn't really nibble. You know, he says, here, let's go. And his stuff is good, but he is not afraid to throw it in and around the strike zone and just see what happens. Kind of a wonderful thing. Well it's great and you pitch a game against a very very good lineup of the Texas Rangers and you have not had a three ball count yet. That's impressive. And he's going to get the dangerous Beltran I think as Wendell hustles out he was playing out there a little bit. Carlos Beltran is 0 for 3. You know, Cap, he has not had a stress, stressful inning. No, and not. I, I doesn't seem like there's been a lot of hard contact no. either. Beltran started the second with a base hit. Then, of course, the, the funny double play that was turned now started by Alonzo. 29, Adrian Beltran. First pitch strikes have been off the charts. I mean, he's he's really. I mean, he can he can throw a strike first pitch or not, and he still can have success because if a pitcher misses on the first pitch that. It might say, well, he's got to come with a fastball. He doesn't have to because his changeup is so good. First pitch to Beltre. Rolled up the third baseline foul. Jose Leclerc starts to throw. Beltre has singled and hit a fly ball to center field. And he drives this one to left. Davis is back at the wall. Gone. Carlos and Adrian Beltre with home run number 32. And the Rangers are on the board. Well, the ball just came into his wheelhouse. And I think with that. That run bullpen started to get active for a number of reasons and that ball just really maybe not exactly where he wanted it or that Beltre cheated enough to get to the fastball before it really came inside too far. And clearly a home run on a day like today hit well by Beltre as he has hit continued to hit well against the athletics in his career. So a two out home run here is Rognet Odour. Door is hit into the double play and hit a fly ball to right field. Well, Door in this series is 0 for 6. And that 
was home run number 445 in the career of Adrian Beltre. So Ryan Matson throw the great change up to Odor in Texas. Three and two. Struck you out and really flailed a change up from Cotton on this one. But Beltre today, three hits given up by Cotton. He Beltre has two of them. Why doesn't that surprise uh, me? It, this really doesn't. <laughs> no. So he get his 3,000, he get his 500 home runs, and he'll go to Cooperstown. One to two, the count to Odour. There's Sean Doolittle coming up. Now at 69 pitches, but lots and lots of strikes. And he gets Odour swinging. Maxwell will pick it up. You're going to have to hurry, and they throw to get Odour side retired. So a home run for Beltre, but another terrific performance by Jarrell Cox. Seventh inning stretch time coming up. Best moments of the season? Well, we think it was July 23rd. Just his ninth game as a big leaguer, Ryan Healy, a walk-off home run versus the Rays. As the A's rallied for three in the ninth. And that finished it off. So yeah. Ryan Healy had just got to the big leagues. He likes you. Not a bad way to start. That was a fireworks night. And it was Smolensky hitting the first pitch yeah. off of Aces Colome and then the walk-off yeah. by Ryan Healy. So at a great moment for a young man in his first major league season. Well, you could look at a disappointing season overall for the athletics, but very encouraging to see so many of the young players come up and do well. So when it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune-up and repair experts. As Jose Leclerc comes in, right hander who we saw down in Arlington. Facing Healy, who hits one very high to shallow left. Rua circles underneath it. That's how number one. True story brought to you by McDonald's. We think maybe this was the best moment, at least the best night of the year for Chris Davis. May 17th, Chris Davis, three home runs in one game, and the final one was a walk-off grand slam. Boy, you'd have a hard time finding a better night than that. Once, twice, three times a homer. Oh boy, Josh, and a jump shot. Into home plate and Chris Davis. I mean, you, you look at this season where you had two players hit three home runs in one game and they did it within three games. That's right. That's Joey Gallo, who is now in the game at third base, and Brett Nicholas is your catcher. Couple of changes for the Texas Rangers. As they try to get some of their starters a little bit of time off. 
Davis is 0 for 3. Not close. Davis has lined out. He has struck out and he has hit into a double play. So 3 and 0 to Davis. Not close, and Davis has a four pitch walk. Chris Davis will have a lead to get that 100th RBI, which we're certainly going to pull for him. You know, he talks about liking the, the Coliseum, but he also likes Angel Stadium because his family's down there. So maybe he will do it in front of his family. He will get three games there to drive in the 100th. But he says he likes playing at the Coliseum and you have the strength the power that he does. There's no park that can hold him. That one is driven toward the right field corner. It one hops the wall. Davis hustling to third. He'll stop there Alonzo to second and he is safe. You know, Alonzo. Had a hustle that ball came. Off the wall. Very nicely to Hoying, and he went into second. Rangers think they got him. Umpire says no. Well, I think it was Alberto who immediately looked at the dugout because you're right, the ball came back and the throw. Think he's safe. I think the foot gets hit and stays close to the bag. Got him on the, the shin. And he didn't hold the tag, Kat. That's one thing that yeah. you should be seeing infielders do more often because he does pop off a little bit. Keeps the back foot on though. And well, the what? thing is, is and they've lost their challenge. It had to be an umpire, right? Because they lost their challenge on the play in the second inning. Yeah, he's got to ask. So he's going to have to try to convince the umpires right. to take a look at it on their own. I mean, if if you lose it, why do you get a chance to convince an umpire? To get an umpire cheat. This is well, a true cheat. I, I agree, but I think the fact that you lose one, yeah. what, I, I don't think that should matter. I see he's going to check it. I just don't think that should matter. As far as what? You shouldn't lose the challenge. I mean, what, what if there's close plays at the end of the game? That's why they have to get the umpires. Well, I understand, but you still got to walk out right. there and you right. got to convince them. Right. And, and they don't have to do it, they're doing it here, but. Uh, you know, I agree with you, but the bottom line, that's the rule that they instituted in baseball, that you have a challenge, and if you lose it, you lose it. You don't have another challenge. It has to be an umpire review if it's after that. We've seen Bob Millman do it. He's convinced the umpires to, to review it. And and maybe it's going to be one thing that's going to be changed in the future as far as the rules and challenges. That happens to be the crew chief Jerry Mills who is doing it and he called him safe. And they called him safe. So it's all said and done. It's a double for Alonzo. Davis to third. So second and third, one out. Following the review, the call is confirmed. Runner is safe at second. So that'll bring up Marcus Sibian. Number 10, Marcus Simeon. Simeon a chance to knock in a run, maybe two. He's got 70 RBIs on the air. Trying to finish strong. One for three today. And he popped it up right side of the diamond. And it's going to be Odor who dropped it. And everybody's going to be safe. The old doer looking up into that sunshine. He had it and he dropped it. So now the bases are loaded with one out. Uh, uh, Simeon probably disappointed there. Didn't get the job done more than that. They called off by Odor. It's too shallow to be tagging and trying to run. Actually, what 
the runner Davis was doing kind of halfway or at least should have been actually had it in his glove as Hoying did. Bases are loaded. We'll see what the ruling is. We have not had anything <laughs> official, and it's a base hit. <laughs> well, well. Well, you got to get those hits with runners in score position. <laughs> I'm just going to say one thing. Good for Marcus Simeon. Yeah, that's right. Good for the sunny day. Sunny day. He's a very, very, yeah, very, yeah. very, very lucky man right now. <laughs> <laughs> Maxwell hits it hard to Odour to second for one, and that's a double play. So the Rangers get the double play. A's do not score. Eighth inning coming up. Seven to one. A's lead. Sportsnet Central. It's coming up at 6 and 10:30. It's over at CSN Bay Area. All the highlights from our game here at the Coliseum. Raiders Titans. Good ball game there. 49ers are up in Seattle. It's all coming up. Two shows. 6 and 10:30. Kelly Johnson and Henry Wolford go home. So 7-1 A's lead the Rangers, and Sean Doolittle comes in. So Doolittle. Gonna face catcher Brett Nicholas. First pitch, a strike. Two and three with a 2.75 ERA for Doolittle. That one looped down the left field line. Fair. Nicholas is gonna head for second and he's gonna have a double. So Brett Nicholas with a leadoff double here in the top of the eighth inning. Well, it was a fastball. The lefty just served it out to left field. And now batting number 18. Inside. Mitch Moreland. And I think from Shaw Doolittle who gave up the, the double to Kemp of the Astros on a slider. Had to infuriate him because it was not his best pitch, but pitch that he's trying to throw to get hitters off his fastball. Nicholas got nothing but fast balls. And now he faces another left handed hitter in Moreland. Fastball is high to Moreland. Final numbers for Jarrell Cotton 70 pitches and a terrific performance. No walks, five strikeouts, the only run, Beltre's home run. 
So he has a chance to get the win. Swing and a miss. That's the good dude, little fastball. Just slightly elevated. Just enough to make it look good to hit, but it's hard to hit. That one's high, two and one. Told you the Blue Jays won today. The Orioles won as well. The Orioles beat the Diamondbacks two to one. That's Dario Alvarez, left-hander. So the Orioles who were struggling but they got the Diamondbacks at home and they swept the D-backs this weekend. That is a huge weekend for the Orioles. So they have that second wild card spot. Tigers lost to the Royals 12 to 9. Tigers so they lose a game in the standings. The Tigers now a game and a half back of the second wild card team O's. The Royals take two out of three in Kansas City or in Detroit I should say Astros beat the Angels four to one and the Mariners beat the Twins four to three well, the Mariners stay alive as do the Astros Jays win O's win Tigers lose Mariners and Astros win that's the way it goes in the wild card race fouled at the plate. Big series this week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the Jays and the Orioles will play. Take that back. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the Jays and the Orioles will play in Toronto. Astros and the Mariners will play in Houston. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Another foul ball. So a couple of good series to watch. And a week from today, every game will start at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. A's will be playing their final game in Seattle at noon. That's the fun day if it comes down to that. Even more so on Monday if any of the teams have to, to play the tiebreaker. High fastball and Moreland can't catch up. Coming up, up, coming up, coming off their amazing run at the Stanley Cup. The Sharks are back on the ice. Sharks hockey returns October 15th to CSN California, the home of the authentic Sharks fan is CSN California. Sharks getting set to hit the ice. First pitch to Jared Hoying is a swing and a miss. Third at bat for Hoying. He's 0 for 2. Nicholas led off the inning with a double. A challenge for Sean Doolittle facing these lefties. He usually sees a lot of right handed hitters, but getting lefties in this inning of the Rangers. Good fastball Doolittle at 95 miles an hour. Point with that very, very wide open stance. This one toward right field, towering drive. Olsen has it. Big swing by Hoing, but got underneath it. So two outs here in the eighth, and Hanser Alberto will hit for the third time. Now batting number two, Hanser Alberto. Face is a little red. Lots of sunshine, although he's in the shade. Most of the crowd. That's where they've gone. Tucked yep. away into the shade, which is smart. It was 85 degrees 
at first pitch. That is a very, very warm day. Don't see those all that often. In reality, for fans who are coming to games in daytime, maybe purchase the tickets up underneath the overhang. Yeah. Full uni there. Hit well toward right. Olsen back. Olsen near the wall. Olsen against the wall and he caught it. Heck of a play by Matt Olsen to end the top of the eighth inning. He went back. Remember, he's about six foot five, and that may have helped him there. For the Rangers, 7 13 and 0 for the A's. All their runs coming in the second inning. Colby Lewis got knocked out. Beltre has supplied the only run for the Rangers. Jarrell Cotton is the story. Seven innings, 70 pitches. He was terrific again. Ryan Healy with the two run homer. And the youngsters continuing to make their mark for the A's here in the final days of this 2016 season. So here's Eibner to face LeClerc, who pitching his second inning, and Eibner waves at a slider. That looks good. <laughs> it's a good day for that. <laughs> My fastball popped up, shallow right. Jared Point who trots in to make the catch. Change for the Rangers at second base. Now so one out. There. Jerickson profile is Jerickson profile. now in the game at second base for Odour. Head Jeff Bannister's coming out after Leclerc gets the big leadoff man in the bottom of the eighth wow. inning. And now we're going to go to. Alvarez. So we got a lefty on lefty matchup when we come back. Number 39, Dario Alvarez.
property of the Oakland Athletics and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group, LLC. So 7-1 A's lead the Rangers, bottom of the eighth inning. The crowd this afternoon, 17,048. As Dario Alvarez comes in, the left-hander for his 25th appearance. Missing Matt Olson. First pitch is a strike. Olson walked and scored in the second, singled in the third for his first big league hit, and then grounded out in the sixth. Headed for the seats. Well back behind the A's dugout. It's Ryan Dull. It looks like he's going to pitch the top of the ninth. Or at least start. Maybe there'll be a reliever come in. With left, a right, left. Lefty up or something. Yeah, you never know. The joy of September. <laughs> Could not hold up, so he went after it. Two away here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Now batting second baseman, number 52, Joey Wendell. And Joey Wendell. Yeah, see, when they're that age, it's time to go. <laughs> the red face. <laughs> He'll be sleeping by 66th Avenue. <laughs> They will not be out of the parking lot yeah. before that little guy is out. Get a few guys on the airplane out fast yeah. too. Yeah. Out. It'll be two announcers out. <laughs> <laughs> two TV announcers. Yeah. This is a quick nap, right? We could get a 45-minute yeah. nap in Ray on the That's plane. That's right. It's not bad. Except to get a good nap on our plane, you really have to put your headphones on, right? To uh, yes. Get some peace and quiet. Yeah. <laughs> get those headphones on early. Get yourself in that. Inside to Joey Wendell. Joey Wendell is one for four. Going to base it in that big second inning. All of the runs for the A's came in the second. Pitch inside and he walked it. So make sure you join us tomorrow. We're going to be in Anaheim. It'll be Sean Manaya and Jared Weaver. Game one of a three game series, three night games down in Anaheim. Coverage begins at 6 30 with A's pregame live. Home of A's baseball is CSN. So big left hander will this be his last start. I guess it would be, huh? Mm -hmm. well, Depends what Sonny Gray does. That's true. Sonny may maybe a seven, pitch a seven man bit. rotation. First pitch to Stephen Bolt. Call the ball. And as it's interesting as Ray mentioned, it is supposed to be smoking hot yeah. in Anaheim tomorrow. Record setting temperatures tomorrow. Three night games, though. That's right. That'll help. One and one to Stephen Vogt. Three run double in the second inning for Vogt. Stephen Vogt. Double total is now 29. So he get to that point in the season where there's certain goals you'd like to reach. I'm sure 30 doubles yeah. is. One of those, there's nothing wrong with that. It's 
baseball is such a numbers game. There are certain numbers you like to get to. Chris Davis, obviously, going to get to 100 RBIs. If you're close to hitting 300, you want to do that. Steven Vogt swings and misses there. Side retired. A's do not score. Ninth inning coming up. Doe will try to get the final three outs. Forces to launch the inaugural fitness sluggers program designed to educate and encourage youth to live healthy and active lifestyles. Participants competed in the monthly fitness challenges with select winners earning A's game tickets and other great rewards. You can take the fitness sluggers pledge, download fitness sluggers posters by visiting athletics.com slash fitness. So ninth inning A's with a seven to one lead over the Rangers. Ryan Dole will try to wrap it up. First pitch, Ryan Rua swings and misses on a high fastball. So Doolittle goes an inning, and now Dole. Now Doolittle was staying on the field to thank and also for a great play. Saved him a run, earned run with the catch of the ball against the wall. Right about his height, that definitely helped him in that play. I think it did. One and two to Rua. Second at bat, he grounded out in the sixth inning. Dole slider. First full season for Ryan Dole, so he's had a, a very good year. Big part of the bullpen next year. Well, he might be going to sleep and hibernating for about a week because yeah, he's, he's had a long season, a very successful season. All right, fastball, swing and a miss. Seven strikeouts for A's pitchers today. One away here in the night. Bob Melvin, starting in spring training, he's continued to right. dwell on the fact that. Ryan Dahl has done a tremendous job, whether it's starting an inning as he is right now or coming in with men on base. He's had a very, very good season, and it started this time last year. Here's Desmond. Desmond is 0 for 3. He's going to miss. So the A's have their fan fest in early part of 2017 that Ryan is able to attend. He wanted to this past year, but he got snowed in. And you don't think of snow on a day like today, but he got snowed in. Looking forward to 2017 when the A's have their fan fest. We've got a pretty good chunk of Maxwell. So 0-2 to Desmond. 
He's post game live coming up after the ball game. We'll have an exciting interview for you. You just don't want to miss it, right? I'm not going to miss it. No, Joe's I'm not going to miss it. Be I might. Be I might be out here fast. I think you're the the time of the game and see you later. Stick around to shake hands, B.I., okay? One-two pitch, swing and a miss. Hard slider down in the way. So Desmond, 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts today. He has not looked great in this series. But Ryan Dell trying to finish it off. Good breaking ball to finish it off the dirt. Now batting, number 36, Carlos Beltran. First pitch to Carlos Beltran is a fastball, a little bit outside. Beltran, he's 0 for 3. Fly ball to left, ground out to second, and a pop out to second. I think these fans are showing their appreciation of this club and take go back to 2012 how loud it got in the game elimination game for the athletics. This is some good fans and they have continued to show it even in down times and they know that baseball cyclical got a chance to come back and they will be back. They're good hardcore fans. Two pitch misses outside, so full count. Cap, to your point in our opening, talking about Bob Melvin and how he wants to win every game, and especially at home. And I would think this is a game that he's happy about, and why he brought Doolittle in in the the eighth. He really, let Cotton go out the seventh, gave up one run, and it came out. Still, just 70 pitches. Three-two pitch in the left field. Beltran with a base hit. Well, he wasn't going to go easy. You knew that. He's very good hitter. And just slapped the ball to left field. So Joey Gallo will get an at bat. Your attention, please. The Shields will pinch run. Three, the line of the Shields is running for Beltron. Now batting, number 13, Joey Gallo. So Gallo, who's been in the game for a couple innings defensively. Beltre, well, he was in there, had two hits and a home run. The Shields, the pinch runner, takes off and he'll go to second base. I'm in a reliever, I would not like indifference. <laughs> no, that's because that puts a runner in scoring position and you come in for one inning and you got to fight now this third out to that's try true. to. Keep a base hit from bringing in a run. Same thing happened with Olsen making the great play with Doolittle. And it's really a great description, defensive indifference, because yeah. really that's exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah whatever, just go. Yeah. <laughs> Except you're right, the, the one guy who's yeah. out there saying, well, wait a minute, is the pitcher. And when you're pitching one inning, that's it. I mean, that, that one Ernie can make a huge difference in the ERA. Gallo hooks one foul headed down toward the Rangers bullpen. Rangers will head home. They will finish this season, the regular season, in their own ballpark and then get themselves ready for the postseason. Well, Gallo's a big swinger. He can get uppercut, maybe elevate a fastball, and not one breaking ball trying to finish him off with the breaking ball. Elvis Sanders just a little nod off. 
Just resting his eyes, right? Just yeah. resting his eyes. Thanks, Scotty. Scotty. Scotty was clearly resting his eyes. <laughs> Sometimes a double ear flap helmet's good. <laughs> Can't hide. <laughs> Can try. Yes. Strike three called, and that's the ball game. So the Oakland Athletics win the final home game of this 2016 season. They finish with the 34 and 47 record at home. And it's always nice to win the final game. Give the fans something to go home happy about. So it took two hours and 31 minutes. It was played in front of 17,048. And the A's beat the Texas Rangers by a final score of seven to one. So home schedule is done. A's will finish on the road for seven games to wrap up this 2016 season. But a good afternoon today. And again, it was the youngsters. Gerald Cotton with seven innings, gave up just the home run. Ryan Healy, he had a big afternoon. Healy had three hits, including a home run. So uh, it's really been kind of the story of the final couple months, the, the youngsters. And uh, this is when you're out of the pennant race, you want to look at the youngsters, yeah. and that's great, but you also want to make sure the youngsters show you something. Right. And they have. There's been a group of these kids that have uh, showed that uh, maybe they belong in the big leagues, and hopefully they'll their advancement will continue next year. Yeah, and I think Bob Mellon wants to see how they do when they win, because uh, they need to win ball games. And I think to your point about Ryan Healy, who had been struggling, and all of a sudden he comes out with three hits today after a hit yesterday and a big home run. So all these things factor into the final month of the season. Bob Melvin is still going to manage to win every game, as he'll do that starting tomorrow night. But the bottom line, a great way to finish a home stand and a home season. Yeah, lots of runs today, and uh, A's were quiet offensively the first two games of the series, but they had the big inning today. And Ryan Healy had a two-run homer during that inning. He is standing by downstairs. And Ryan, we appreciate you stopping by. Congratulations on a big win today. And I want to ask you, we're talking about how much you've played in the second half, playing in September for, for the first time. We don't want to ask you if you're tired because I think we know what the answer is going to be. But at any point, have you felt like, like, wow, this is a lot of games and I'm dragging a little bit. Maybe I, you know, I need to concentrate a little bit more. I'm going to 100% agree with you with that. I've definitely reached out to some of the veterans and asked for advice in that regard. I mean, we're deep in September and playing every day. Um, I think some, somehow it's more of a mental grind than a physical grind at this point. So just making sure that I'm mentally prepared and locked in every single day and every single pitch. Um, just making sure that I'm ready to win a ball game. Speaking of uh, reaching out to the veterans, how much have you talked about struggling at the big league level? You, you may go for a few games, and then all of a sudden you start getting some hits. That is part of adjusting to Major League Pitching and Major League Baseball. How have you been able to do that? Just trying to uh, like not let things spiral out of the control, understanding that offers are going to happen, struggling is going to happen. It's the ebbs and flows of the game. Um, and really understanding that the next day is your best opportunity for success. Uh, once that day is gone, you lead the field, you lead the game there, and you lead the bats at what it was. The next day you show up, you watch video, you work in the cage, and you re-prepare yourself for the next game and make sure you have professional bats. And it's also a game of adjustments, and uh, you've seen Kobe Lewis a little bit. You have not seen Kobe Lewis at his best. I mean, we, this guy has shut down the A's before, but take us through your second at bat to Kobe Lewis. You got a base hit in the first inning. Did you learn anything from that at bat that you took into the second at bat when you hit the home run? You know, I've been batting with timing the last couple days, um, leading some of the offers, so I think that it was really in, in at bat adjustments during that AB mostly. Uh, I got a little big on an early slider. I felt like I saw it well, but I was still pulling off. So I don't know if you noticed, but I fouled a ball off down the right field line. And that was the adjustment I made. I said, let the ball travel, see it deep, and let's get good contact on the ball. And he made a mistake. I mean, it was still a good pitch up and in, but I was able to just react and let my hands work instead of overthinking the at bat and letting uh, my muscle memory take over. You know, you guys have not had a particularly great home record, which is probably something that uh, as your time goes, you're going to see you're going to play a lot better. Bit. What have you enjoyed about the fans here at the Coliseum playing you know, as much as you have? I was sitting there in third base. I last sitting just hearing the fans chant and uh, it really just kind of made me emotional in some way. I mean, it's been a long season it's where I started to where I am now. It's been a lot of fun and, you know, really having the fans behind us all along, even though we're not having a great season. Um, hopefully they see the bright future ahead with the, the young guys we have coming up and the great mix of veterans we already have. Um, I think this team has a really, really bright future ahead of us. It may not be this season, but understand that 2017 is not out of sight for us. Um, but we're going to finish strong this year and then take it into spring training and continue to roll. All right, Ryan, great job. Uh, we always love interviewing you and uh, good luck the final week of the season. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. All right, so Ryan Healy, another big afternoon. And I thought it was interesting what he said. 
He said, yeah, maybe I am getting you know, yeah. a little tired at times, but I go to a veteran and say, hey, right. how can I do that? And he strikes me as a kid who really, really wants to learn and right. get better. And, and it's more than just taking ground balls with Ron Washington. I mean, that's great, but there's a lot to it. And I think yeah. saying to a veteran, hey, if I'm dragging a little bit, well, how do how do I get my mental approach back? And he's not afraid to go to a veteran and ask that. You know, he's a young guy now. He's going to be a veteran very soon, like like next year, and they'll be coming to him. But one of the many, many very good young players this ball club has for the future. Yeah. How about Jarrell Cotton? That was fun to watch. It's he was a lot terrific. Of fun. I mean, this whole ball club is doing great, and Cotton right at the top of the list. All right, so uh, a good way to finish this home schedule. The A's with a good win today behind Jarrell Cotton. He gets the win, and the A's. Bob Melvin says thank you very much. The good fans of Oakland, 7-1 is your final. You've been watching Ace Baseball on CSN California. It's part of the NBC Sports Group. Don't go away. Ace Post Game Live starts right now.